guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm here in this random parking lot, but I'm not here for a random reason. It's this car right here. This is it. This is the all new 2023 Mercedes AMG SL55 Roadster. But before we get into this twin turbocharged drop top of a performance car, let's talk about what's going on here. If you want the pinnacle of performance, design and engineering, you have to have those three letters attached to your Mercedes product. That AMG brings everything up to a new level. And this being an SL55 is a true AMG performance vehicle. It's not just some AMG badges and wheels and maybe a special grill. This takes performance to the next level. Now, this is the latest of the lineage of the mighty SL platform. Over the years, it really has changed in its shape and its size, but one thing it's always tried to put first is, of course, that ultimate and drop top luxury and also performance. Now, in this segment, there's not a lot of convertibles anymore, not a lot of drop tops. A lot of them are checking out. One that still exists that happens to be the hometown rival of this particular vehicle and brand is going to be the mighty Porsche 911 Carrera 4S Crab Cabriolet. Both of the brands, Porsche and Mercedes-Benz, are from Stuttgart, Germany. That's where their main headquarters resides and where these vehicles are built. But what I want to find out is, if you're looking for a performance convertible drop top that has twin turbocharged power and all-wheel drive grip and performance is the new AMG SL55 the way to go over the mighty 911? Let's go ahead, let's dive in and find out. Right off the bat, the whole car is new. You may see some familiar lines from the AMG GT, but this SL55 is all new from top to bottom. Up front, you're gonna get that familiar digital LED headlight technology and wonderful design with these angular headlight housings with the LED turn signals, daytime running lamps. Massive, I'm talking about ginormous corner air intakes. These are not air curtains. These are for the heat exchangers that live right behind those massive openings. I like the way they have these vertical slots. Almost makes it look like teeth. Like it's gonna bite into your neck and just rip out your jugular and let you bleed to death. That's the kind of performance that this vehicle brings. There's a little bit of gloss black and some flat black, but I love the way that they sectioned this off and actually extended it off the front of the vehicle. Now, as we come across that long, low slung hood, you're gonna get that familiar Mercedes AMG grill design. Vertical slots with some horizontal going on. Little bit of shiny chrome finish, especially of course around the silver star. You do have a forward facing camera. And on the lower portion, you see more of that functionality, both with this dual splitter setup, but then all the cooling that's gonna take place from right behind. And of course, you're gonna get those three letters. That AMG badge, so much history. Really just phenomenal what they've been able to accomplish. But you can see that nice width, very aggressive without going too over the top. Definitely, if you park this next to a Porsche 911 Carrera 4S, this is gonna get the car. This is the one that has the more aggressive look and might get more looks overall park next to one another at a cars and coffee event. Now, when we get up onto that low slung hood, you do have the Mercedes Benz badge, all that German history. And then of course, besides the badge, you're getting the double bulge action. Everybody wants one bulge. Well, guess what? Mercedes says, we're gonna give you two bulges. So I love the way you have that rise on both sides of the hood and from behind the wheel, it gives you a perfect visual reference point. As we come around the bend, we're gonna swing around and we're gonna take a look at what's going on wheel and tire setup. So if you notice with the wheels, you're getting these optional, they call these the airflow wheels. Love the design, something very unique and each of these little placements are gonna help generate more airflow to help cool the brakes and help with aerodynamic efficiency. Of course, you got the AMG badge. These are forged aluminum wheels, a little bit of machined aluminum finish to it. 
And then if you're wondering, well, what's the size of this wheel up front? This is a 20 inch wheel and the tire width is gonna be 265 on the width and then 40 series on the sidewall and they're wrapped with these great Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. Gonna give you plenty of grip and plenty of wear characteristics. You'll notice that banana yellow, bright, multi-piston, ginormous caliper, AMG branding, six pistons are gonna clamp down on a cross-drilled two-piece rotor that's gonna help dissipate that heat. We have all-wheel drive, so the power is going to all four wheels, and we have a special, because this does have the optional performance package, special tuning with that adaptive suspension, all four corners for this vehicle. Let me know what you think about the wheel. Now, I know it's probably gonna be a bear to clean, but it does have a very unique look to it. Now, as we kind of rise up and swing around, the one zonk I have is gonna be this fake vent area. I don't know what is the purpose of this. I would have just kept it smooth, but you do have your V8 bi-turbo 4-matic all-wheel drive system. Of course, if we have the Roadster, you gotta have the top down. I like the way they black out the window frame Black out your mirror caps. You do have 360 degree cameras and the turn singles that are built in. Nice, slim and trim. And then of course, when it comes to door handles, they did a great job keeping them flush and just a little bit of chrome. So the chrome on the front of the vehicle, a little splattering on the side. You'll notice how that side sill extension drops down with the gloss black. I love the way it kind of gets wider as you come towards the rear of the vehicle. And speaking of the rear, 20 inch wheels, all four corners. The difference though, 295 on the width. And you got a couple Twinkie size calipers back there, that bright yellow Twinkie color, looking really good with those AMG wheels. And then to wrap it around the back, it's got that familiar contemporary flow from Mercedes. So nice flared fender look. You could see how when the top is down, it would have been nice to see an actual tonneau cover, a hard tonneau cover. So I am gonna zonk how you can see the claw top, but I do love the way all the lines come nicely into the rear end. You do have an adaptive, active rear spoiler that raises and lowers right from this area here. You got your SL55 badge, full LED lighting. And then as we drop down, I love the quad tip exhaust. AMG, of course, they are active, so you can make them louder or quieter. And you got that rear diffuser out the back that looks really good. But while we go ahead, yes, there's a lot of fine touches on the outside. Let's pop the hood and see the hand assembled by Turbo V8 in this AMG SL55. All right, guys, we got that massive hood popped. You do have hood struts, of course. Underneath that hood is that hand assembled by one person. This particular person, Dominic Stark, is the man who has hand assembled that bi-turbo V8 engine. It's actually the long distant cousin to Tony Stark. But anyways, that's a different story for a different video. What you're looking at is a four liter bi-turbo V8 pumping out 469 horsepower, 516 pound-feet of torque. It's mated to a nine speed, what Mercedes calls an MCT. Technically it's a DCT, so a dual clutch transmission. This one is equipped with that AMG speed shift, they call it. It's got an electronic limited slip diff, zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds, top speed 183 miles per hour, MPGs 14 in the city, 21 on the highway, and the vehicle weighs 4,305 pounds. Now, if you're comparing this to a Porsche 911 Carrera 4S, that vehicle has a twin turbo flat six putting out 443 horsepower and made it to an eight speed DCT. But here's the big difference, zero to 60 in three seconds flat, top speed 190 miles per hour. The great news about this new SL55 is that the convertible top is actually 46 pounds lighter than the previous generation and it folds in 15 seconds. And then of course we have that AMG active control for the suspension. You do have race mode on this particular one because of that performance optional package. And then on top of that, you also have launch control. But why don't we go ahead, let's see what that launch control looks like when it's activated. Let's go on throttle and see this SL55 
go down the road. guys we're inside this 2023 amg sl 55 i know you're saying to yourself well joe i've always wanted an sl my dad had one when i was growing up i fell in love with it i really like what they've done so far with what i've seen with this amg sl 55 how much is it so this one has the optional color called patagonia red it's got that performance package. It's got carbon fiber, so it's got a lot of options on it. MSRP, $158,000. Let's see what is different and how it stacks up to the 911, because guess what? There's not one part shared with this SL55 and the outgoing one. So, those famous words, to the door panels. Absolutely love the leather, the contrast stitching, the white piping, and of course, that phenomenal speaker grill cover. Nice, bright silver finish. You'll notice you have the traditional door set up for the, the seat controls. You have heated seats, ventilated seats, and the Mercedes-Benz um, air scarf. You have three memory seat settings, and there's that carbon fiber package that I was telling you about. Door pocket is a pretty decent size, two Boston cream donuts, and uh, area for a nice glass of milk. Now going from the door panel to the dash, I like how far forward the dash is. More of that leather both up top and on the lower portion. Those amazing aeronautical AC vents with the ambient lighting. And then you come across to the all new 11.9 inch portrait style, that vertical style infotainment system screen, very similar to what's in the S class and the new C class. You have your dual climate control, navigation, as you can see, it's all touchscreen capability. Now, let me show you a couple features. First of all, of course, you got plenty of different icons. We got track pace, which is for when you're at the racetrack. We go into AMG performance. You could pick up all that engine data. Look how killer that looks. Come on, the vehicle data. Really, really awesome how you could go through all your different settings. You could even tilt the screen. So watch this. Screen actually goes full vertical, slide it back. It goes back down. The reason why they did that is so when you have the top down, it's gonna cut down on glare. You could go directly right into all your different functions. We have a front lift system, so we could actually lift the front of the vehicle, our head up display, which I'm actually gonna turn that on. All the other features, very easy to figure out once you get the hang of it. You could even go into settings and then you have all your different adjustments. And I love the way they got the graphics and everything. And then you go right back to home. I'm gonna keep it on performance because that's what I'm all about. Working your way down, you do have some gloss black, which I am gonna zonk, but you got the carbon fiber. Open up this door, what do we got? Two cup holders, wireless charging, two USB-Cs, and of course, AMG, baby. Spin it around, what do we got? The Mercedes-Benz Silver Star. You could open up the trunk, nice size, and I like the way it looks classy. You got a palm rest here, if you just wanna rest your hand. And then you got more leather. Open this bad boy up. You got two more USB-Cs and enough room for six Twinkies. Don't do seven, you're gonna bust cream all over this beautiful interior. Speaking of beautiful, you have the Napa leather with the Mercedes air scar scarf system, AMG. Great bolstering, full electric assist, of course. I love all the stitching and everything. And then you have Alcantara on the headliner of the convertible top. So that's a really nice touch. But why don't you come over here to the business end, I wanna show you behind this amazing race-inspired steering wheel in the AMG SL55. Right, guys, here we are in the SL55 behind the business end. You got this beautiful aluminum sill plate with the AMG logo that illuminates LED at night. In the pedal box, you got a pretty good amount of room. Aluminum brake pedal throttle. I just, I'm uninspired by their dead pedal. I wish there was some kind of actual real dead pedal that's aluminum too, that would be a nice touch. Seats, 
Like I said, they got a good amount of bolstering up top, even on the bottom, pretty decent, and they're gonna hold you in, but it's also a seat that you could drive every single day. I'm six feet tall, and with the top up, I have plenty of room here. Steering wheel, like I said, right out of a race car. Nice thick rim, two different styles of leather, flat bottom, you do have your control knobs with the digital screen, so you can actually go through your different modes right here with the knobs, or if you wanna go from automatic to manual and shift with the paddles, you could do that, or you could pop up the rear wing, like I'm gonna hit that, and then the rear wing will actually rise up. Now, speaking of shifting, you have these massive metal paddles behind the wheel, and then check out the digital display. Looks absolutely phenomenal with all the clear graphics. And of course, you could change it. I got to, it to show the G meter. You can see how the tachometer is. And you got a head up display. And then as we back out and go towards the back of the car, you can see I put up the rear wing to show you what that looks like when it's extended. Now I'm gonna put the top down. So we're gonna do this. And then you actually have to do it through the touch screen, which is a little bit of an annoyance. And I'm going to then slide it to put the top down, and it should take about 15 seconds. I hope you're timing it. Almost there. Should get a little chime. There's your chime. Guess what? We have four seats in this SL55. A piece of mother nature just fell on me. Why don't we go ahead, let's get into the back and see how it feels being adult in the backseat of the SL55. Right, guys, I'm glad that I did this, not because it feels good, because this is totally awkward. If I look awkward, I feel awkward. So the seats are big enough for an adult, but the seats push you forward. There's actually, that's as, that's as far back as it's gonna go. I have the driver's seat forward just to kind of free up this area so Steven could show off what's going back here. This is one of those ones like, if you are going down to the beach, that's as far as I wanna go. I would not wanna go any further. And to show you how much room there is when you put the seat back, yeah, this is, this is fun. Plus, I'm very curious how I'm gonna be blasted with the wind because the top of the windshield is right about here on my face. So I am gonna probably get some good wind buffeting. You're probably gonna look like you stuck your finger in an electrical socket with your hair after you get out of this vehicle riding in the back seat. But you know what? Let's get into that trunk. Let's crack it open like a walnut because I'm ready to go on throttle. Not sitting here, but sitting behind the business end of this SL55. Right, guys, time to get into that trunk. Now, unlike the Porsche, which has that front mounted trunk, we have a traditional trunk location. You hit the button, nice electric assist. You're actually gonna be greeted to a decent amount of space. Two carry-ons can fit in that trunk, which is nice, and then other than that, that's all you got when it comes to room inside the trunk area. To close it, you're just gonna hit the button. You gotta finesse it a little bit. There we go. Nice down, seamless, but if you're ready, I'm ready. We got the keys. Let's go on throttle in this AMG SL55. All right, guys, we got the top down in this 2023 AMG SL55. You know, right away, it's just incredible the fit and finish and how everything is wrapped around you. The back seats are kind of just there. They're not very usable. So it'd be interesting to see this model in some type of even higher performance level without the rear seats. But I have everything in full race mode. We're gonna shift manually with those ginormous paddles. I love the view I have out over the hood. And even the way the roof line, you'll notice with the frame around the windshield it's gonna get that air clearly over your head but if you're ready I'm ready Andre, here we go yeah really really nice the sound the pops the bangs out of the exhaust Steering, very intuitive. Here we go. <laughs> On those massive brakes. All wheel drive.
giving you the traction, giving you the grip. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So let's talk about what the heck is going on here. The Napa leather, the wonderful carbon fiber, the seats hold you snug as a bug in a Mercedes AMG race car rug, but yet it feels civil because it's got all of this great technology and engineering with the formatic all-wheel drive system, the way that it builds boost with the bi-turbo V8, it's just phenomenal. And you're not waiting for that boost to come around. Using the paddles with that MCT, which is a DCT transmission, that speed shift transmission, very, very quick shifts up and down. My only zonk is, I'm not really loving the dash when it comes to the tachometer readout and everything else, but it does look very futuristic. And even the way that they did the infotainment system screen, I'm very impressed how there's not a ton of glare. I mean, depending on where the sun is, you do get some major glare, but you can still see it. But now, even though the sun is behind me, I still have great visual of the infotainment system. So that's a nice touch, but the steering is very direct and I love the way it's got the sound and it's not some pumped in mumbo jumbo. It's coming out that AMG exhaust. What I love about the car is when you're just cruising, it's like you're wearing a race car tux. It feels that smooth, that compliant, that wonderful. And then you do the downshifts. Oh, bro, here we go. Yeah. On those brakes. <laughs> the way it handles is just unbelievable. Look at this. Nice. Really, really wonderful how it develops that power and just how smooth it is. I mean, that's the thing that's so deceiving is that what they did with the AMG SL55 compared to say the AMG GT is that it's not so raw. It's a it's a more polished feel and you're definitely going to notice that. But the way that they have the cabin organized, everything is well within reach. I like the way you could tilt the screen if you are getting the glare. Uh, all the ambient lighting, the carbon fiber, this leather, and it is nice to have the rear seats but it's only gonna be for smaller people, kids, and for a short distance. Nothing really, really far, but I just love going up and down this nine-speed DCT with these metal paddles and having all the controls just really well laid out. But one more time, we gotta do it some more, right? On throw, here we go. On the brakes. Here we go. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. The grip. The grip. It just goes to show all of the work that Mercedes does in Formula One. All of their sports car endurance racing, all of that is brought into this car. But like I said, it's like you're wearing a tux while you're racing because you're getting all the fine fit finishes and the ride isn't beating you up even though I'm in race mode. And it's just smooth, very purposeful. Everything does its thing so effectively. Like when you turn in, super quick. It's like you have to reprogram your mind a little bit compared to SLs of the past, just how quick turn-in is with this vehicle. It's that good, and it holds a line so well because of the way that the power is being sent from the rear to the front. They did a bang-up job on that. And the sound, that's, it's just enough. It's not too crazy, it's just enough. All right, guys, I put the top up. Amazing that they were able to shave over 40 pounds of weight 
from the previous generation's convertible top and it only takes 15 seconds and you could put it up with the car in motion up to 37 miles per hour my only zonk is i don't love having to use the infotainment system the touch screen to make the top go up i wish there was a physical manual switch that you operate rather than sliding your finger that's the one cumbersome thing about it but i wanted to show you how much room we have and how it drives so one more time here we go on throttle nice love the sound man sounds like one of their imsa freaking gtd race cars Super smooth on the downshifts. That quick turn in, look at that. Just rips you right out of a turn. Nice and balanced. Not death gripping the steering wheel. Just really freaking shows that they did their work. That's the bottom line. They did their homework. And then like I said, drive it every day. You got your front axle lift. You don't have to worry about scraping it on a curb or your driveway or getting into your place of business it just it, it makes it that all-arounder more so than an amg gt and i hope that this has been a great on throttle experience for you i know it's been a great on throttle experience for me we're gonna get back to where it all started and wrap this one up i'll see you in a split second all right guys it's been one heck of a day with this bi turbo v8 Mercedes AMG SL55. I definitely got to thank Andrew, Alana, and the rest of the team over at Mercedes-Benz USA for allowing us access to this press fleet vehicle. Let me know what you think. Has Mercedes-Benz done the SL history, the tradition, the heritage? Have they done it right with this AMG SL55? Or are you going to go across the street, literally, in Stuttgart, Germany, and pick up a 911 Carrera 4S Cabriolet? Let me know your answer in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. Of course, we got to give it up to Stephen Flood. Stephen Flood Photography, he loves Porsches. The only thing is he wants that eight speed or seven speed P PDK over a manual transmission. But we'll keep working on them. Don't worry, guys. Show him some love in that comment section. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.